Hi, I'm Amy Shannon, and this is Storytelling with Amy Shannon. This is a series of videos that I've been doing because due to some health issues, I have not really been able to actually sit down and write or type out a story. And I wanted to keep my storytelling abilities alive for as long as I possibly can. And I'm starting out sharing some stories that I've already written, but maybe you haven't heard about and you might be interested in reading for yourself. Um, so the next story is called Chains. Now the title for Chains is about, it's almost literal and it's metaphorical because the chains, even when they're removed from the young girl who has taken them, she still feels them around her ankles, around her neck, around her body. Um, the story is about, uh, well it starts out as um, a young girl who's 12 years old and she is kidnapped and her two friends um, watch as she's being taken um, from the school parking lot and they're in elementary school and um, it's about Veronica Lawrence who is being raised by her Aunt Sadie after her parents died. Um, Veronica, but everyone calls her Ronnie, um, is taken and she's held captive for a very long time. She's taken at 12 and finally at some point around her 21st birthday she is released. Um, I won't get into the details because that's part of the story but really it is about not just the abuse that she endured because the man who took her is not just a pedophile but he likes to share her and he abuses her in other ways that's not just sexually. Um, the story starts out in the prologue with um, her friends watching her be um, kidnapped. Um, and then it picks up in chapter one and it's um, 1,825 days that she's held in captivity. After reading the, st the story for a while, you find out, the reader finds out what happens to her on the day she was kidnapped and what she remembers. There's certain parts where Ronnie doesn't even remember her own name. She doesn't remember why she's called Ronnie. She knows it's a nickname, but she doesn't even really remember what it is. She was told by this man who took her, who she is told to call Mr., um, that her aunt didn't want her to be unsafe so he, she gave him to her and didn't want any contact and later he tells her that her aunt has died. Now I'm going to read an excerpt from chapter 2 which kind of sets the tone of the story but it's not just about what she endures it's about how she keeps herself alive how she doesn't give up even when she thinks this is the only life she's ever going to know. Um, so chapter two. Mr. brought her through the lighted room, which was a stark and chrome decor kitchen, to his living room. The dark brown heavy curtains were drawn and the front door was triple locked. He sat her on the sofa and stared down at her. There is no leaving, so do not move until I come back. If you do, I'll know. I won't move, mister. She carefully leaned back into the plush maroon sofa seat, trying not to be comfortable, but she couldn't help it. The fabric embraced her naked body and was so soft, a softness she never felt in her life. She didn't move her head, but her eyes wandered the room, scanning the bookshelves that lined one wall and seemed to enter into another room that was also filled with shelves. Oh, if I could only read again, she thought of her seventh grade education. Not smart enough. Her eyes drifted towards the dark, wood desk that was positioned near the curtain windows. She looked at the coffee table that was a foot away from the seat of the sofa and noticed a pile of magazines in one corner of the table. The top one was labeled parenting and then her eyes stopped at the pile of envelopes, probably incoming mail, that was in the green square decorative bowl in the middle of the table. Her eyes strained to read the address on the top envelope, careful not to move her body. Dr. S. Channing, 59 579 West Henna Street, Suite 600. She couldn't make out the town or the state, but now she knew who Mr. was. He was a doctor. He was Aunt Sadie's doctor. 
That's why she gave her to him. She trusted him. She sat straight up, staring ahead, and she noticed his shadow, and the mister's body coming out of the room with the open door. Very good, my love. You behaved. Yes, mister. I did. I want to be a good girl for you. You're better than that. Now, I want you to go in that room I just came out of. I'll be following you. He took her hand as she stood up. She walked slowly with her limp, since both her ankles were raw and sore, towards the room, not knowing what she would see. Her eyes lit up at the large four-poster bed. The bedding was a deep red, and there were hints of gold weaved in the fabric. Across from the bed was a mirror desk, and next to that, a sliding door that she assumed was a closet. This is my room, my love. Your room? This is the room I'll let you stay in. It's mine. As you know, everything here is mine, including you. It's time now for you to take your place. I think you know your place, but you must obey me. There will be no disobedience. Yes, mister, I'll behave. She longed to touch the soft fabric of the comforter on that soft, large bed. He walked over to another dresser and opened the top drawer. He pulled out a box and walked over to her. He kneeled and wrapped a bulky dog collar around her ankle. I'll know if you leave, this will keep you safe. Remember, there is nothing for you out there. I need to keep you safe from those who killed your parents. Remember what I said. I remember. I'll be good. I promise. I want to be good. I want to be safe. Good. He kissed her cheek. You need some clothes. I can't keep looking at the scraggly body all, the, all day. I don't know how I can sleep with such ugly woman. He pinched her small breast and took a step back. Too big, if you ask me. Couldn't help that. I should have bound him when I had the chance. She lowered her head with disgust. Yes, as she got older, she felt uglier. Not just from Mister's treatment of her, but she felt that she could never get clean, no matter what. Sometimes she even used the bleach for the floor on herself, but it didn't work. I don't wish to be ugly anymore, Mister. And then it continues from there. Her life with Mr. shines through, and his ability to not get away from what he truly wants are young girls. But for some reason, he wants to keep Ron as his. So the story continues, and yes, at some point she is rescued, but it's still a long journey for something that she wants most in the world. A life for her, a life with her family, and never having to look over her shoulder to figure out if he's coming for her. So I hope you enjoy the story. Um, the book changed, the entire book is available on Amazon.com. It's in paperback or Kindle. So whatever way you wish to look at it, I would um, be honored. And if you like it, or no, um, you know, leave a review. That would be very nice. Um, I have a lot of stories to tell. Some I've already written and kind of want to share in a new way. And others have yet to be told. So thank you for watching. Bye-bye.